This is the Cambridge Preliminary English Test, number two. There are four parts to the test. You will hear each part twice. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions, and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. You will have six minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the answer sheet. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any questions now, because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper. And look at part one. There are seven questions in this part. For each question, there are three pictures and a short recording. Choose the correct picture and put a tick in the box below it. Before we start, here is an example. What's the time? Have you got the time? Yes, it's twenty past three. The first picture is correct, so there is a tick in box A. Look at the three pictures for question one now. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. One, how much is the man's ticket? Can you tell me how much a ticket is for Saturday's performance of Macbeth? The front stalls and the circle are the most expensive at sixteen pounds fifty. The middle seats in the stalls cost fifteen pounds, and the back three rows cost twelve pounds fifty. But the view isn't so good. All seats are ten pounds for students. I'll have one in the middle, please. I'm not a student. I've got my credit card here. Now listen again. Can you tell me how much a ticket is for Saturday's performance of Macbeth? The front stalls and the circle are the most expensive at sixteen pounds fifty. The middle seats in the stalls cost fifteen pounds. And the back three rows cost twelve pounds fifty, but the view isn't so good. All seats are ten pounds for students. I'll have one in the middle, please. I'm not a student. I've got my credit card here. Two. What will they have for lunch? It's chips for lunch. What would you like with them? Not fish again, please. And we had chicken last night. Well, we've got plenty of sausages, but we've finished the eggs, I'm afraid. That's decided then. Now listen again. It's chips for lunch. What would you like with them? Not fish again, please. And we had chicken last night. Well, we've got plenty of sausages, but we've finished the eggs, I'm afraid. That's decided then. Three. Why was the man late home? Hi. Have you had a busy day at the office? Yes. Sorry, I'm late. I didn't get the bus because Pete offered me a lift. We didn't realise the motorway was closed because of a lorry accident, so it took much longer than normal. I'll be even later tomorrow with the train strike. Now listen again. Hi, have you had a busy day at the office? Yes, sorry I'm late. I didn't get the bus because Pete offered me a lift. We didn't realise the motorway was closed because of a lorry accident, so it took much longer than normal. I'll be even later tomorrow with the train strike. Four. What was the weather like on John's holiday? How was your holiday, John? We had a good time, but the weather was awful. We didn't have one sunny day. 
Oh dear, a week in the rain. Poor you. Well, that's the funny thing. It never actually rained. It was just freezing cold and cloudy. We thought it might even snow. Now listen again. How was your holiday, John? We had a good time, but the weather was awful. We didn't have one sunny day. Oh dear, a week in the rain. Poor you. Well, that's the funny thing. It never actually rained. It was just freezing cold and cloudy. We thought it might even snow. Five. What time was the woman's appointment? I've had an awful morning. I was really late for my hospital appointment. I just missed the nine o'clock bus, and the next one didn't come until twenty to ten. I was supposed to see the doctor at ten past ten, but I didn't arrive until half past. He wasn't very pleased. Now listen again. I've had an awful morning. I was really late for my hospital appointment. I just missed the nine o'clock bus, and the next one didn't come until twenty to ten. I was supposed to see the doctor at ten past ten, but I didn't arrive until half past. He wasn't very pleased. Six. What did the woman buy? Did you get anything from the duty free shop? Well, I really wanted some of that perfume I bought last time, and I got a large bottle. Then I looked for the Walkman I'd promised I'd get for Tony. Fortunately, they'd sold all of them, so I had enough money for a lovely silk scarf for myself. I completely forgot about the chocolates I was supposed to get for Mary. Now listen again. Did you get anything from the duty free shop? Well, I really wanted some of that perfume I bought last time, and I got a large bottle. Then I looked for the Walkman I'd promised I'd get for Tony. Fortunately, they'd sold all of them, so I had enough money for a lovely silk scarf for myself. I completely forgot about the chocolates I was supposed to get for Mary. Seven. Where are the man and the woman talking? It's a bit crowded, isn't it? Worse than a football match. Can you see well enough from here? It doesn't matter. As long as I can hear and get down the important points of what he says, it's okay. I'm going to the library after this. I want to get this report finished so that I can go to the cinema. Now listen again. It's a bit crowded, isn't it? Worse than a football match. Can you see well enough from here? It doesn't matter. As long as I can hear and get down the important points of what he says, it's okay. I'm going to the library after this. I want to get this report finished so that I can go to the cinema. That is the end of part one. Now turn to part two, questions eight to thirteen. You will hear a woman called Sarah talking to a group of people. About her painting. For each question, put a tick in the correct box. You now have forty-five seconds to look at the questions for part two.
Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Well, good evening, everyone. <clears throat> I've um, come along to talk to you about my painting. It was just a hobby, but it's really more than that now. I used to paint in the evenings after work, but now I work four days a week instead of five. That means I spend Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on my painting. I have pictures in local exhibitions at least once a month. I'd love to give up my job and spend all my time painting, but I work with computers and I earn more that way. I do make some money from selling my pictures, enough to pay for all my paint, brushes, and paper, and a few art lessons. I'd love to go to art college full time for three years, but I've got all the rent on my flat to pay and a car to run. I first became interested in art when I was at primary school. I used to go out with some paper and a few pencils during break time and draw anything I saw: houses, gardens, people. Then at secondary school, we had art classes twice a week. And I learnt how to use chalk, and then different kinds of paint, watercolours, oils, and so on. Those classes were really useful for me, and ever since then, I've had lessons of some kind. I've attended evening classes, and been on what they call painting holidays, where you go out into the countryside and paint during the day, and then sit and discuss your work with a teacher and the other artists after dinner. Those holidays are great. You learn so much talking to other people studying with you. I've enjoyed painting in lots of different countries. I've been to Morocco and painted desert scenes with beautiful sunrises. I've been to Greece and Spain and painted pictures of the local people working in the fields near their homes. My favourite place is still Scotland. I love walking in the Scottish mountains, and there are so many different birds to see, especially in spring. Well, I'm going to finish now by showing you a video of the places I visited. After that, there'll be a chance to relax with a cup of coffee, and then there'll be time for some questions. Oh, and I've got some information about my next art exhibition for you. It's going to be at the Queen's Gallery. Now, if someone would turn off the lights, then I. Now listen again. Well, good evening, everyone. <clears throat> I've um, come along to talk to you about my painting. It was just a hobby, but it's really more than that now. I used to paint in the evenings after work, but now I work four days a week instead of five. That means I spend Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on my painting. I have pictures in local exhibitions at least once a month. I'd love to give up my job and spend all my time painting, but I work with computers and I earn more that way. I do make some money from selling my pictures. Enough to pay for all my paint, brushes, and paper, and a few art lessons. I'd love to go to art college full time for three years, but I've got all the rent on my flat to pay and a car to run. I first became interested in art when I was at primary school. I used to go out with some paper and a few pencils during break time and draw anything I saw: houses, gardens, people. Then at secondary school, we had art classes twice a week, and I learnt how to use chalk, and then different kinds of paint, watercolours, oils, and so on. Those classes were really useful for me, and ever since then, I've had lessons of some kind. I've attended evening classes, and been on what they call painting holidays, where you go out into the countryside and paint during the day. And then sit and discuss your work with a teacher and the other artists after dinner.
Those holidays are great. You learn so much talking to other people studying with you. I've enjoyed painting in lots of different countries. I've been to Morocco and painted desert scenes with beautiful sunrises. I've been to Greece and Spain and painted pictures of the local people working in the fields near their homes. My favourite place is still Scotland. I love walking in the Scottish mountains, and there are so many different birds to see, especially in spring. Well, I'm going to finish now by showing you a video of the places I visited. After that, there'll be a chance to relax with a cup of coffee, and then there'll be time for some questions. Oh, and I've got some information about my next art exhibition for you. It's going to be at the Queen's Gallery. Now, if someone would turn off the lights, then I can... That is the end of part... Now turn to part 3, questions 14 to 19. You will hear a radio program giving you information about the city of Glasgow. For each question, fill in the missing information in the numbered space. You now have 20 seconds to look at part 3. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Well, good morning. This week's programme is about the city of Glasgow. We're going to give you some ideas of what you can see and do if you visit for a weekend. Glasgow is Britain's third largest city and Scotland's biggest. It's well worth a visit. If you arrive by car, the motorway will take you into the city centre. Don't park in one of the city centre car parks, however, as they're expensive. It's better to leave your car at your hotel or somewhere away from the centre and take the bus. Glasgow is a large city and there's an excellent public transport system. A good idea is to catch a Discovering Glasgow tour bus, which leaves George Square every half hour. You can get off anywhere and catch the next bus to continue your trip. The tour costs £5, and tickets are available from the bus driver. If you want to walk around the city centre, then it's best to start at the Welcome Centre on St Vincent Place. You can get information about opening times and entrance fees of places to visit, and take a free map to help you with your sightseeing. Don't miss the 15th century cathedral, which has particularly beautiful windows. Further on is the Merchant City area where there are cafes and lots of small, fashionable shops which sell jewellery and clothes. Byers Road is popular with university students, and you can find a lot of bargains in the shops around there. The Botanic Gardens are also worth a visit. The gardens are open until sunset, and the glass houses from ten o'clock until a quarter to five. These contain a wide variety of beautiful plants and flowers, the gardens are also a good place to have a picnic. Well, that's all from me for this week. Next... Now listen again. Well, good morning. This week's programme is about the city of Glasgow. We're going to give you some ideas of what you can see and do if you visit for a weekend. Glasgow is Britain's third largest city and Scotland's biggest. It's well worth a visit. If you arrive by car, the motorway will take you into the city centre. Don't park in one of the city centre car parks, however, as they're expensive. It's better to leave your car at your hotel or somewhere away from the centre and take the bus. Glasgow is a large city and there's an excellent public transport system. 
A good idea is to catch a discovering Glasgow tour bus, which leaves George Square every half hour. You can get off anywhere and catch the next bus to continue your trip. The tour costs five pounds, and tickets are available from the bus driver. If you want to walk around the city centre, then it's best to start at the Welcome Centre on St Vincent Place. You can get information about opening times and entrance fees of places to visit, and take a free map to help you with your sightseeing. Don't miss the 15th century cathedral, which has particularly beautiful windows. Further on is the Merchant City area, where there are cafes and lots of small fashionable shops which sell jewellery and clothes. Byers Road is popular with university students, and you can find a lot of bargains in the shops around there. The botanic gardens are also worth a visit. The gardens are open until sunset, and the glass houses from ten o'clock until a quarter to five. These contain a wide variety of beautiful plants and flowers. The gardens are also a good place to have a picnic. Well, that's all from me for this week. That is the end of part three. Now turn to part four. Questions 20 to 25. Look at the six sentences for this part. You will hear a conversation between a boy, Frank, and a girl, Linda, in a music shop. Decide if each sentence is correct or incorrect. If it is correct, put a tick in the box under A for yes. If it is not correct, put a tick in the box under B for no. You now have 20 seconds to look at the questions for part four. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. So where do you want to go first, Linda? Uh, let's go in here. I want to see what they've got. It was my birthday last week, and Mum gave me some cassettes. They're really great, but I've already got one of them, so I want to change it for something else. I love this shop. There's always so much to choose from. What are you going to get? I'm not sure. I thought I'd just have a look around and see if there's anything I like the look of. I want something different. I'm a bit bored with all the music I normally listen to. Can you suggest anything? Well, you don't usually like the sort of music I listen to. What about this band? Hmm, who are they? I've never heard of them. They're a new band from America. They're not very well known yet, but you wait and see. In another couple of years, they'll be really famous. Hmm, let me have a look. Can you find it on cassette for me? I haven't got a CD player. The sound's much better on a CD. You should get one. Well, there's no point for me. My cassette player's really good quality, so it wouldn't make any difference. Besides, CDs cost a lot more than cassettes. Here you are. I found it on cassette. Oh, look, it's on special offer. That's really cheap, isn't it? I'll take it. There's something else we could get while we're here. What's that? Well... There's a concert in the sports stadium next week. There's a new Irish band playing. You might like them. So, would you like to come with me? Oh, that sounds great. I hope I do like them. The last band you took me to see was awful. This one is different. I'll go and buy some tickets then, shall I? All right, then. Now listen again. So where do you want to go first, Linda? Uh, let's go in here. I want to see what they've got. It was my birthday last week, and Mum gave me some cassettes. They're really great, but I've already got one of them, so I want to change it for something else. I love this shop. 
There's always so much to choose from. What are you going to get? I'm not sure. I thought I'd just have a look around and see if there's anything I like the look of. I want something different. I'm a bit bored with all the music I normally listen to. Can you suggest anything? Well, you don't usually like the sort of music I listen to. What about this band?、Mm, who are they? I've never heard of them. They're a new band from America. They're not very well known yet, but you wait and see. In another couple of years, they'll be really famous.、Mm, let me have a look. Can you find it on cassette for me? I haven't got a CD player. The sound's much better on a CD. You should get one. Well, there's no point for me. My cassette player's really good quality, so it wouldn't make any difference. Besides, CDs cost a lot more than cassettes. Here you are. I found it on cassette. Oh look, it's on special offer. That's really cheap, isn't it? I'll take it. There's something else we could get while we're here. What's that? Well, there's a concert in the sports stadium next week. There's a new Irish band playing. You might like them. So, would you like to come with me? Oh, that sounds great. I hope I do like them. The last band you took me to see was awful. This one is different. I'll go and buy some tickets then, shall I? All right then. That is the end of part four. You now have six minutes to check and copy your answers onto the answer sheet. That is the end of the test.